Welcome back, I'm Joshua Santora coming to you from near the Kennedy Space Center. We took a couple months off, obviously we had the Crew-1 mission, a phenomenal flight, um, the first crew of seven on board an expedition on board Space Station. We also had the Sentinel-6 Michael Freilich flight from the West Coast at Vandenberg Air Force Base, beautiful launch and landing. And then we had just recently the SpaceX Commercial Resupply Services Mission 21 um, take off to supply with supplies and resources for the, the crew aboard Space Station. Um, we're getting back into things now, talking about what does it take to get humans into deep space and specifically how the world's premier spaceport is playing a part. Today we're going to focus on the way that the Kennedy Space Center is probably the most directly involved in humanity's exploration, and that's by way of launching. We'll be launching the Space Launch System rocket, or SLS, along with the Orion crew capsule on top, and this is coming by way of the Exploration Ground Systems program. You may not have heard of them, but they're responsible for all of the infrastructure to actually launch. They major in testing, launching, and recovery uh, for the next generation and evolution of humanity's deep space exploration. So let's get started. Jumping right in, we're now joined by Yves Lamoth, who is the Exploration Ground Systems Com Systems Project Manager. Uh, and thanks for joining me, Eves. It's always a pleasure when our paths cross. Oh, you are so welcome, Josh. Happy to be here. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about your role for Artemis? All right, so um, as the Com Systems Project Manager, uh, I'm responsible for providing, you know, Com Services, which includes voice, imagery, and transmission systems uh, to support launch. You know, we work with uh, uh, the Marshall Space Flight Center and the Johnson Space Center, and uh, and they may need data, they may need imagery, they may need um, access to some of those um, items, and so we the, the transmission piece of it is what provides um, the ability to get them that data that they need. Yeah, as we prepare for the Artemis One flight, Artemis Two and Three are right on its heels, and we don't have time to just focus on one at a time. We're working all of those really together. Uh, so is this really a rinse, wash, and repeat process for future missions? So, uh, you know, in essence, the answer is yes, right? Um, because when you think about the shuttle program, while the missions were different, the process was always pretty much the same. We will learn a lot from Artemis 1, and uh, the things that we learn, we will apply them to the, the follow-on missions, and it'll give us an opportunity to refine the, proce the processing and launch the vehicle much more efficiently. Eves, tell me why the goal of humans back on the moon is so important right now. You know, um, that, that's a really, really good question. Why do we do the things that we do? We have this amazing resource um, on the moon with so many knowns and unknowns, and it would almost be a crime if we didn't explore what, what the possibilities are on the moon. Now, um, the moon is also a perfect place to establish a base right, um, or a point of departure to get to Mars. So if we can build a moon base, figure out how to live long-term in space, then that makes it easier for us to head to Mars and figure out how to do the same thing. So um, the moon is sort of like practice for us to, to figure out how to keep, how to sustain human presence in, in the space environment. And the things that we learn from there, we can apply them to our travels to Mars. If you could tell the people of Earth uh, one thing about Artemis, one big takeaway for them, what would that be for you? Our future depends on it. That is, that is the one thing that I would leave everyone with, is it's important, it's uh, valuable. Um, Earth is precious, and it takes, it takes a lot to take care of our precious Earth. And uh, we, as humans, right, uh, we have to explore and figure out how to find resources to help us sustain or prolong, I should say, our life here on, on Earth. Well said, yeah. Uh, obviously, communication is critical to the success of every program and mission. Uh, so good luck to you and your team. Uh, excited for, for what you have to do in the future for us. Absolutely, Josh. Always a pleasure to be here with you guys. Yeah, until next time. You got it. Joining us now is a man with a couple different titles and a lot of responsibility in ensuring we get off the ground successfully. Uh, he is both the chief of the test launch and recovery operations branch and the assistant launch director, Jeremy Graber. Thank you for making time for us today. Hey, absolutely, jo Joshua, I appreciate you having me on today. I obviously just mentioned both of your titles there. Can you break down those roles for us? So I'll kind of hit 
each one of them uh, as the chief of the test launch and recovery operations branch. Uh, folks in my office are responsible for bringing all of the right representatives, subject matter experts, uh, O'Brien folks, um, uh, SLS folks together, the engineering, the, the safety pieces, all of those things together for these very large integrated tests. And so it's it's really exciting because we get to, to kind of be on all sides of this. Um, uh, and then from a launch uh, assistant launch director perspective, um, that's a function I provide to our launch directors, uh, Charlie Blackwell Thompson. I'm essentially her right hand. Uh, anything she needs, I go off and work. And on launch day, I'll be there sitting next to her, helping her with anything she needs. As the team is preparing for the maiden flight of SLS Artemis 1, in roughly a year from now, a year can seem like so long and no time at all. What's left to do? Absolutely. So there's there are quite a few things that we have to do. So once the core stage arrives, that'll be that final piece. And we will have already, like I said, started stacking the, the boosters. <clears throat> we've got work that is gonna come with the core stage where we've got to actually prepare it and get it ready. So that work will happen in the transfer aisle of the vehicle assembly building. Then once we get that stacked, there's several different pieces that get stacked on top of the core stage till we're tied to, to up to a final and total uh, Artemis configuration. Once that's all complete, then you have to test. We want to make sure that when we roll out to uh, the launch pad for launch, that every system has been checked, under, that we're within all of our requirement sets, and that we're ready to fly. Obviously, the role that the launch team plays in humanity's deep space exploration is to literally get this thing off the ground. As you look beyond Artemis 1, what are the things the team is working today to prepare uh, for the future of our flights? With Artemis 1, there is not a crew, right? So certain aspects of what we would typically be worried about, um, we don't have to focus on for Artemis 1. But Artemis 2 comes very quickly after Artemis 1. And so in parallel with Artemis 1 preparations, we are working on many of the crew related activities and capabilities that we'll need. So uh, an example for launch, our emergency egress system, which is a capability, should there be an emergency during the launch countdown, is what the flight crew would utilize to basically escape from the, the vehicle onto the mobile launcher and then down to, to the perimeter of the launch pad and then to be able to escape out from the launch pad. Um, on the recovery side, it's the same thing. We're, we're partnering with the Navy and all of the different capabilities that we need to be able to recover the crew post uh, splashdown get them safely onto our recovery ship. So we're working directly with the flight crew, directly with all of the Navy personnel that are you know, immediately uh, interfacing with uh, the vehicle and making sure that we've got plans and capabilities available for those uh, crew related capabilities moving forward. And, and th those are just a couple of little snapshots, but we are very, very focused on that in parallel with also getting ready for Artemis 1. No doubt the tip of the iceberg when it comes to trying to work things in parallel, doing so many things at once. Um, incredibly excited to see this first mission fly and subsequent ones as well. So good luck to you and the entire team. I know you have a ton of work to do and we're excited for your success. Thank you so much. Appreciate the time and thanks for having me. You certainly cannot get humans to deep space without a ride. And we are literally in the process of seeing that ride come together with stacking already underway. Uh, join us next time for the last episode in this particular series as we look at how to survive once you get to deep space. Uh, the moon or Mars can seem like a desolate place, but there's a lot of resources there available to us. And we'll cover what that means and how we're making good use of it. That's going to do it for this episode. And remember that even the sky isn't the limit.